Okay. So I was saying that when someone requests for a credit card, the credit card issuer, first they do their due diligence and everything. You'll be taken through the process as if you are going in for a loan. And if everything is okay with you, as in you have the affordability, the credit card issuer will create the revolving account, the revolving account for you, and then grant you a line of credit, which you can spend or they can make payments on your behalf. And then at the end of the month, they will send you the credit card bills for you to settle the amount involved. Now, I also said that the line of credit they grant someone who requests for a credit card depends on how much the person receives at the end of the month, as in the person's salary. So if I was using the example of thousand Ghana, that if for instance, your salary is thousand Ghana cities a month, the Bank of Ghana's regulation, um, no salaried worker is supposed to use more than 40% of his or her salary to settle monthly or uh, to make installment for uh, on monthly basis for loans taken. So it means that if you receive 1,000 Ghana cities, you can pay or you can uh, take on credit, which will take up to 400 Ghana cities of your monthly salary per month. So you cannot go beyond 400 Ghana cities. So if you are going in for a credit card and you have all your affordability intact, then it means the line of credit that the credit card issuer would grant you will be up to 400 Ghana cities a month. That is if, if, if maybe they see that your risk, your risk level is not that high then they can grant you up to 400 Ghana cities a month. Meaning during the month, you can spend, you can shop. They will make payments on your behalf up to 400 Ghana cities. At the end of the month, they will send you the credit card bill. So if you use all your line of credit, then at the end of the month, they will send you a bill, which is up to 400 Ghana cities. If you're unable to use all your line of credit to so at the end of the month, they will send you, sorry, they will send you a bill which is up to the amount you used during the month. So that is how it works. We will explain more as we move ahead. Yes, my dear. Madam, please, can that be a case that if the line of credit that, we, that was given to a customer Mm -hmm. And then he or she wasn't able to use it. Like, mm -hmm. would they renew it or top up? No, you see, it is on monthly basis. So every month you have up to, for instance, the 400 Ghana cities. So if you use okay. all the 400, no problem. But if you are not able to use it, then they will top up for the next month. You you get it. Okay. Up to so, they, so they no, no, no. Like, what I mean is, Let's say, for instance, this month you've been given 400 cities, uh, and then you didn't use it at all. Uh -huh. So next month, would they top up or like would they add maybe no. another 400 cities? No, they won't they add another. No, they won't add another 400. It will always be the 400 until maybe your salary changes and they increase it. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, okay, always. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. It is 400. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. So. As we were saying, let's move on. All right. So I think we will go, we will go into some small history about credit cards. Then we will come back to the uh, uh, to how credit card works. We'll come back to what we were discussing uh, not so long ago. Now, when it comes to the history of credit cards, um, one man named Edward Bellamy, he is or he was, sorry, he was a renowned writer in the 1800s. He is credited with the, with the use of the name credit card right as far, as, as far back as 1887. He wrote a novel called Looking Back. 
his book, that is his utopian novel, Looking Back. In that book, he mentioned, he made mention of the term credit card 11 times, 11 times. You see, in his book, he imagined a world where someone could shop and then he would just use some sort of a card to make payment. That it was like, uh, you know, you know, um, movies or novels are sometimes based on fiction and all that. So in his novel, he made mention of credit card 11 times. So he is credited to have used or to be the first person to have used the term credit card as far back as 1887 in his novel called Looking Back. Now, aside Edward Bellamy, when you look at modern credit cards, as the credit card we have today, they actually came about as a result of a lot of merchants' credit schemes that they were given back in the olden days. In the olden days, before credit card came into the scene, if someone went to a shop and the person bought item on credit, then the merchants had their own way of, they had their own credit scheme. For instance, maybe they kept some notebook where they recorded all the customers who bought on credit, plus how much they owe, when they are supposed to pay, etc. So they had their own, they, I mean, it wasn't a, a one credit scheme. There were a lot of, uh, I mean, there were variety of, merchant credit schemes back in those days. Then in 1920s, that is around the 1920s, US started using credit cards. And the credit card, the credit cards they were using in those days were mainly to self well. The credit cards were mainly to self well. And it was normally issued by the filling stations, that's the fuel stations, to their credit worthy customers. So the, so the fuel stations came up with credit cards, which they issued to their credit worthy customers. And the credit cards allowed the credit worthy customers of these fuel stations to buy fuel on credit. Because once they were holders of the card, of the credit card, they could purchase fuel on credit and then later paid for it. So that is how it came about. And every fuel station had their own uh, credit card they issued out. Now, this continued in the 1920s. Then around, around 1938, around 1938, several companies, that is this time, not only the filling stations, you know, were into the credit card business, but several companies also thought it wise to introduce the idea of credit card, credit cards being issued to their credit worthy customers so that they could buy on credit and later make payment for it. So several companies started using credit cards. And one amazing thing is unlike before, that is unlike in the 1920s where every filling station accepted their own credit card. This time around the 1938 thereabout, now companies started accepting each other's credit cards. So for instance, if um, 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 let's say um, Shell, Shell issued credit cards to its customers. This time, not only Shell credit cards were they accepted, all the Shell credit cards were not only used in, to purchase fuel in Shell, but they could be used in other filling stations, for instance. This is just an example I'm just citing for you to see what I'm talking about. Because in, in before, in the 1920s, companies issued or companies only accepted their credit cards. But Right in the 1930s, they started as accepting each other's credit cards. Now, one of the companies which were into the 
uh, credit card business or the, one of the first companies to be involved in the credit card issuing to their customers was Western Union. Western Union. You know, Western Union ha has been in the system for so long. And Western Union started or began issuing um, what they call the charge cards to their frequent customers as far back in 1921 as far back in 1921. And they were issuing charge cards. Now, this time they called it charge cards. And back in those days, it wasn't credit card to Western Union. They called it charge cards. And the charge cards were just some printings they made on some paper cards. Please, please, everybody, microphone should be muted. Mm. I said that once you join, mute your microphone. As soon as you join, mute your microphone. Mute your microphone. Okay, so um, Western Union's credit card system, or what they were using at the time was called charge cards. And the charge cards, they were just some printings that were made on some paper card stock. And um, the, you know, if you make printing on some paper card, that could easily be counterfeited. So at that time, even though it was helping, but it wasn't a, a, an ideal sort of card which could help customers because people could make counterfeits of the card and then use it in the name of other people. Now, the church cards or what at the time was known as a charger plate charger plate charger or let's say that the charge cards were they be, they were developed into charger plates and the charger plates was developed in 1928 now this charge plates or charger plate sorry which was developed in 1928 is the predecessor or uh, was an early predecessor to the credit card that we we have been talking about. I told you that in those days it was called the charge cards or the charger plates, and they were mainly used right from the 1920s till even 1950s. They were still in use. The reason why we call them the charge plates, I've told you, because they printed some writings or. Um, um, they printed the name of the customer, the owner, et cetera, et cetera, on a small card stock, which was used for... Uh, Linda, your hand is up. Um, yes, madam. You, the according to the slides that you showed us, the Western mm -hmm. Union started issuing the credit cards in 1921. Yeah. And you said the... Um, charger plate the was charge, yes the charge they called they called you know when it started it wasn't called credit card immediately it started as a charge card which later became charger plates or you uh, find credit card but the charger plates is actually the the uh, what is known today as mastercard We'll, we'll come to that. We'll come but to. You said the charge plate is the predecessor of the credit card, but in the slides uh -huh. it shows that it was developed in 1928. So, that's it yes. came after. I, you know, I started. Card. Western Union started with charge cards. Charge cards. Do you remember that one? Right in 1921. And then. <laughs> Who, who is laughing at the background? Is it the it's same person sister. asking the question? No, no, it's my sister. Hey, then tell your sister oh. to keep quiet. Okay. All right. Is she a small girl or a big girl? A big girl. And she's laughing. Yeah, right. someone was saying something. All right. So I was saying that, you know, credit cards started not as credit card as we know. Even though, you know, we have types. We will, I mean, if I say types of credit card, I'm referring to the various companies, the world brand, the world known brands. We are coming there. 
But that when they started in the early 1920s, one of the first companies to have started using um, credit card was um, Western Union. And at the time, they called their credit card charge cards. I, are you following? Yes. They called it charge cards. And it was just some small sort of paper. It wasn't plastic. It wasn't plastic as we know it today. It was just some small sort of paper that they um, developed. They developed to aid customers to um, make purchases and then the company will pay on their behalf and later they make payment. Then these small cards later on, if a lot of developments were going on, then later we had another type of or sort of credit card, which is also, it was in the same era called the charger plates. Now the charger plates this time, I've not finished. I was going to describe it the more. This time it wasn't just a small card which was which had some writings printed on it, which helped the customers to shop. But this time the charger plate was like um, it was like this UPSA hospital card. When you go to the clinic, you see you are given some card, it's a bit bigger. Have you seen the card I'm I'm referring to? Yes, please. When you go to the clinic, you are given some sort of card. That is how the charger plate was like. And this and the charger, this charger plate I'm referring to, it wasn't like something that was given to the customer. This one was something that companies were using. They were using it to speed up their back office operation. So what happened with the charger plate was that they kept the charger plate for their most loyal customers so that anytime they came to make credit purchases, they they picked their charger plates. Every loyal customer had a charger plate with a name on it. So every purchases you make on credit, they recorded the purchases on the charger plates. And then after recording, maybe how much you bought, the time you are supposed to make payment, etc. Then they placed it at their back office. It helped with their filing system. Are you following? Are you following, my people? Yes, madam. Uh -huh. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So the charger plate was actually um, for, or it helped companies with their back office operations so that they don't have to, you know, um, go into, go through books, like maybe, you know, previously some merchants were keeping notebooks and a whole lot of, I told you there were a lot of credits, variety of credit schemes that they kept. So some of them could have been that they kept the recording of customers in notebooks and when customer owes, you have to flip through a long process. But this time with the charger plate, they had places in their back office where they placed customers' charger plates. So according to maybe their own arrangement of how they, they kept it. So it helped them to easily identify which customer or where a particular customer's charger plate is, how much the person owes, when the person is supposed to pay back the amount involved in the credit purchases. Is that making sense, Linda? Yes, madam. Okay, so let's continue from there. So um, the charger plates was actually working like that and it continued right from the 20s, 30s, and even some part of 1950s, they were still being used. And the, the charger plates or the early charger plates were actually a trademark of Parenting Manufacturing Company. They were issuing the um, charger plates to their regular customers. And I've already mentioned this. I've already talked about this. The fact that it helped with back office operations. So I'm not going back to that. So the charger plate too was still in use. I've told you from 1920s through 30s, even till some later part of 1950s. But 
as we tell the history, as the Charger plays two was ongoing, in the year 1936, in the year 1936, American Airlines and Air Transport Association, they try to bring some sort of simplicity or to simplify the process with um, credit card sort of system by coming up with a card they call the air travel card, the air travel card. Now this air travel card, the main idea behind it was to issue their most loyal passengers. Take a, who have issued them credit cards so that it will enable people who wants to travel now but cannot afford payment now to actually use the credit card, that's their air travel card. You see, this is also another type of credit card back in those days. So the air travel card was also another type of credit card back in those days. And it enabled customers who wanted to travel now but couldn't make or buy air tickets to, have to purchase air tickets and then make their travel later on come and pay or settle the bill involved. So that was the air travel card. And one amazing thing about the air travel card was that it actually gave discounts. Not only were customers buying uh, tickets on credit, but they were also able to enjoy discounts of I think up to 15% or so. Let me see, let me confirm it, is it 15%? Oh, okay, I didn't bring it, I didn't bring it. But if you go online, I think the discount was up to 15% or so. Oh, all right, it's here, it's here. Oh, it's there, all right. The discount was up to 15%. I didn't bring the figures. It is just the right, the uh, worst. That is why I couldn't identify it. It's on the lecture slide, up to 15%. So all the holders of, um. Uh, American Airlines and Air Transport Association's travel card, they enjoyed uh, um, tickets on credit, that is air tickets on credit, plus 15% discounts. So you could travel now, they will make, the company will afford your traveling um, tickets. I mean, they will buy it on your behalf, make payments on your behalf, Plus, give you 15% discount. And then later, when maybe at the end, during the end of the month, they will send you the bill, you pay the amount involved. They actually brought in the discount to encourage more people to come for the air travel card. So that is also one aspect of the history. Then in 1958, as we go ahead with the history, a lot of things were happening. A lot of companies were coming up with their own sort of credit card system. In 1958, American Express, American Express created a worldwide credit card network. You know, all this while, the credit cards were basically, most of these credit cards we have seen were basically used by companies or companies accepted their own credit cards or even if other companies accepted other credit cards, they were only used within US. You get it? You couldn't, for instance, send your credit card to UK, shop and use it to make payments in a, in a UK store. It wasn't like that because at the time there was nothing like credit card network. But in 1958, when American Express came in, they decided to not only come up with a card that would change the whole credit card um, atmosphere, but also bring in the worldwide credit card network system, <clears throat> sorry, which enabled customers to travel and then use or spend, use their credit cards in other countries, et cetera, et cetera. So right after introducing that, in September 1958, Bank of America, <coughs> Bank of America launched the Bank America, the Bank of 
America. That, that was the name of Bank of America's credit card that they launched in 1958. So the Bank America, they launched it in Fresno, California, Fresno, California. So when they launched their Bank America, it's actually intensified the competition of credit card, the competition in the credit card industry. It came to intensify it because Amer Bank America's credit card was an all-purpose credit card. It served a lot of purposes. It was also networked. It had a lot of advantages. So it actually became the first successful recognizable modern credit card. And it had, like I've mentioned before, overseas affiliates, which allowed customers to travel and still use their credit cards. And this Bank America that we have seen, the Bank America that we have seen, or we've just talked about, evolved into what we have today as the visa system. The Bank America with their all-purpose networked credit card evolved into what we have today as the visa system. Now, you know visa has a major competitor and the major competitor to visa is the MasterCard, the MasterCard. Now, in 1966, you know, Bank America introduced their yeah, um, Bank America in 1958, 1958, and they became very successful, like I've mentioned, and very recognized as well. They were enjoying some sort of monopoly because people saw their card as an all purpose card. It came to overtake um, uh, the existing credit cards. And it, it was it was actually you know um, enjoying or chopping like we would say a lot of successes. Then in 1966, the ancestor of Mastercard was born, and this ancestor of Mastercard was born when some group of Californian banks, because they saw the monopoly that uh, Bank Amer Bank of America was enjoying with their Bank America some group of California banks decided to come together, come up with another credit card, which was also going to be an all purpose card and which was specifically designed to compete with Bank America, to break that monopoly that Bank, America, Bank of America was enjoying. So, Master Charge at the time, the name, it wasn't, it didn't start as MasterCard. It started just like Visa did not start as uh, Visa. Visa started as Bank America. MasterCard also started as Master Charge. When the group of Californian banks came together, they came up with a card called Master Charge. And this card was to compete with Bank America. Now, the master charge didn't have it easy at all. In fact, the successes of Bank America were so huge that it was difficult trying to compete and overtake them. So they, 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 they realized that they needed more hands before they could overtake Bank America, I'm talking about the group of Californian banks who came together. They realized that with their master charge, they needed more hands so that they could overtake Bank America. So precisely in 1969, that is after, after three years of being in existence, they decided to merge with Citibank. Citibank had introduced or they had launched an, a credit card called Everything Card. Back in 1967, Citibank had also introduced a, a credit card or their credit card that they called the um, Everything Card in 1967. 
and at least it was, you know, it was performing. They were okay. But then when Master Charge realized that to be able to overtake Bank America, they needed more hands. The group of banks which came up with the Master, Car Master Charge approached Citibank and discussed the possibility of a merger so that they could merge Master Charge with everything card so that they will become a very strong front or they will have a very strong front to be able to compete with Bank America. And God being so good, in 1969, the merger took place. So they merged, Master Charge merged with Citibank's everything card and they were able to, you know, compete keenly with Bank America and they became the MasterCard that we know today. That is for US, a bit of history. When you go online, you will get all the information we've spoken about plus more. So you can read more on the history. But in terms of UK too, in terms of just something small on UK's um, credit card history, UK too, um, their, first, their, their first credit card they had was a product of Barclays Bank, Barclays Bank, which was introduced in 1966, in 1966. And this Barclays Bank's credit card they introduced in 1966, and which also happened to be the first credit card outside to be used or to be launched outside the United States, was called the Barclays Card, the Barclays Card. The party card. The party card to this time was a networked card which enabled customers to also use it even outside the UK. And it happened to be the first credit card to be used outside the US, like I've mentioned before. So, my dear ones, you can read more on the history. As for Ghana, our credit card history is something that, um, I mean, we are still in the history anyway. We are still in it because uh, uh, we've, it's not been that long since we've experienced credit card. It's not been that long. Just some few years back that we started, or financial institutions in Ghana started introducing uh, credit cards. But a debit card has always, it has been with us for a very long time. When we get to debit card, we'll talk about that. All right, so... Let's see how credit card works. I have already talked about talked about how credit card works. The early part, I've told you that as I was. Hey, wow. Do you have somebody called Deborah Duchum in your class? I've just seen the Bore Duchum. Frank. That should be you. Madam, that's you. No, it's not me. Madam, please, when you went off, that name came. came. Because I'm supposed to admit this person. And my name is not Debora Duchumo. Uh -uh. My name is Debora Educhumwa. You don't have the word which means somebody no, is the, hiding no. under no. a pseudo name. I've never seen it before, that's why I'm asking. All right, so I will not admit that person, I'll remove that person because I don't know who that person is. Okay, so so as I was saying, there were Duchum removed. Okay, so as I was saying, and my name too, eh? When you are spelling my name, the edu comes with hyphen, hyphen. You know. Names are very, very important. How you spell name. 
they are very, very important. So if you spell my name, they do without hi without hyphen, then it means it is not me. You will understand this if you do some bit of law, okay? It is very, very important you get people by their name and how they spell it. It's very, very important. Okay, so how credit card works, we have spoken about it a bit at the early part of the lecture. I told you that if you need a credit card, you have to request for it from the credit card issuer. They will assess you. If you fail, they will create a revolving account where they will grant you a line of credit and your line of credit is based on your ability to pay or your affordability. So when you have the line of credit granted, then you can go ahead and use your credit card. Now, anytime you use a credit card, let's say you go to a shopping mall, you buy items, just like you saw Rebecca, Rebecca in the movie, uh, Confessions of the Shopaholic. Anytime you make a purchase with a credit card, the credit card issuer makes payment for you immediately to the merchant of the items you are buying. So that later they will send you the bill. Now, when you make a purchase and then you get to the counter where you are supposed to make payments for the goods. And you bring out your credit card, just like we saw in the movie when Rebecca was trying to pay for the scalp, the green scalp. Now, when you give the uh, attendant or the shop attendant or whoever is the, your credit card, they will swipe it or they will slot it into the point of sale device and then they will request for some sort of verification from the holder for some sort of verification now the verification will be sometimes they can ask you you, you can oh no uh, sorry you, before i come there let me let me go step by step now as soon as they swipe the card and a letter sent to the credit card issuer because the the first thing that needs to be confirmed is whether there is enough credit line in the revolving accounts of the holder so once they see that you have enough credit line then they will come to the verification. Now, the verification, what I'm talking about is just take some few seconds. It's just some few seconds. Because the reason why they need to do this is sometimes the card may have been stolen. So if the credit card, the real owner has reported the card stolen, then the person who is going to use it, when they are to send, they will stop or they will they will not allow the purchase or the payment to go through. And maybe they can even, it can even lead to the arrest of the holder of the credit card. So once they see that there's enough funds or enough credit line, then the credit card holder will need to do some form of identification. So sometimes they may ask you for your personal identification number or the PIN or they can ask you to give some details on the card, like maybe the address that has been registered on the account on the card, the expiry dates of the card, some sort of questions just to be sure that you are the true holder of the card you are holding. Now, once the verification and everything is done, like I said, it comes few seconds for this to be done, then the credit card issuer will transfer the money, the money from the customer's revolving account to the merchant's account, to the merchant's account. That will represent payments of the 
items purchased. So when the money has been transferred to the merchant's account, there should be a record or an evidence of the payment and the purchase. So what will happen is that the merchant will print two receipts, two main receipts. Now the two receipts which the merchant will print, one will be given to the credit card holder. I mean, all the two, the credit card holder will sign the two. Then the merchant will keep a copy. The merchant will keep one. Then the credit card holder will also keep one. The reason why they are both keeping records is very, very, very important. Now, whenever or at the end of the month, let's talk about the credit card holder first. At the end of the month, if the credit card issuer brings the credit card or sends the credit card bill to you and you go through, you see that there are some items you did not purchase. Maybe someone may have stolen your credit card. So the, the person made purchases, which you were not the one who actually did make uh, made that purchase. Normally, when you are going to um, challenge this, you go with your receipts, with your receipts, that you are not the one who actually spent that amount. And in the video, Confessions of the Shopaholic, you saw Rebecca doing same. You see, when she was giving her credit card bill, she went through and then said, she, she started saying that someone has stolen my credit card. Someone has stolen my credit card. Someone has stolen my credit card and has gone. It's on a, it's on a shopping spree in New York. I don't know if you remember that part. That's what she said. And then the uh, card issuer, the star who is in charge of Rebecca, the relationship officer, as we say in Ghana here, actually came in and said, no, nobody has stolen your credit card. You you spent it. You remember that tent? I had to walk and I had to organize the collection and we made payments. Then she said, oh, okay, I remember. You see? So you can challenge if you feel that there are some items that on the bill that you didn't spend, you can challenge. And if you have a course, they will take it off. They will take it from the bill. You will not settle it. Now, from the point of view of the merchant too, what happens is that the merchant needs evidence that he has actually sold to the credit card holder. Because sometimes the money that the uh, card issuer is supposed to give to the merchants, they may need some sort of evidence that the person actually bought from your end. And they will have to provide the receipts that they issued with the signature of the customer on to the credit card issuer. So the receipts, they are very, very, very important okay now all right i've talked about all this so you let's say that the credit card holder has been making a lot of payments and purchases with the credit card at the end of the month the bill will be sent to him or her or the credit card statements will be sent to him or her and like i said if you have any cause to challenge any of the items stated on the bill, you can do so. And when you, your, your, you, the credit card issuer realizes you have a cause, they will take it off. They will take it off. Now, anytime the credit card bill is sent to the credit card holder, they give normally, they, they, they give a, a grace period to make payments. Grace period is given to make payments. If you do not make the payments at the end of the grace period, then the credit card amount will start going up. They will start charging interest. Normally, we say that normally what a credit card issuer does is to waive interest 
on the credit card amount, I mean, how much you spend. Normally, they waive interest on it. That is if you pay within the stipulated time. But if you go beyond the stipulated time, they will charge you full interest plus penalty. So you will pay full interest on the amount spent plus penalty. And uh, it is so worrying that sometimes some people, when the interest and the penalty plus the bill itself, it, it keeps on piling up. It will keep on piling up, going up by the day. And if care is not taken, trying to find him or herself in a situation that we call snowball, snowball effects. It is somewhere in the slides. Snowball effect. The snowball effect is just the point where the customer cannot pay his or her credit card debt. That maybe he will have to apply to court for um, to be declared bankrupt. And you know, when you are declared bankrupt, it means that your debts will be, when the court allows it, your debts will be forgiven. And mind you, once your debt is forgiven, there's no way you can ever be given a credit card again. Because what happens with when you file for bankruptcy and it is approved? It means that you are not credit worthy. And I told you that for a credit card issuer to give a credit card, your credit worthiness is very, very important. They need to know that you are somebody who will pay back their money should they make payment on your behalf. So if you have filed for bankruptcy, a bankruptcy, sorry, and it is granted, and your debts are forgiven, then it means that the same person, you will never be given a credit card again. You, you, you don't qualify or you don't fit. You are not credit worthy to be given a credit card ever again, until maybe otherwise, when you have proven yourself and been, been able to you know, pay back your debt and it's on full track, then maybe they will look at doing business with you. Okay. I've talked about all this, so. All right, I've even talked about this, the interest, that the interest are normally waived. Normally, I mean, Usually they waive interest on credit card bill or the credit card debts, they waive interest on it. That is if you pay within the stipulated time. But if you don't pay, they will charge you full interest plus penalty. Now, let's come to some types of credit cards. Types of credit cards. Types of credit cards. Now, credit card comes in different types. Now, one thing I want you to know is that when we talk about types of credit cards or debit cards, it is not as if um, we have a particular card uh, made and labeled as such. Normally, we look at how the card works or how what it does. That depends the type of credit card it is. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It is not like we have labeled, like for instance, I'm going to be giving you some uh, types of credit cards. You won't see a credit card labeled maybe standard credit card. There's nothing like that. You won't see credit card labeled standard credit card. Or you won't see credit card labeled um, 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 reward credit card. But it depends on how it is used or the benefits that goes along with the usage of the card. That's what determines the type it falls. So please don't think that you see a card labeled with any of the types we are going to be looking at. Okay, so there are several types of credit card. That's why, uh, and I've also mentioned here that um, um, these days you see that various companies and the various uh, names they may give to credit cards. Some, some financial institutions have customized their credit cards. They may call it maybe just an example, maybe they'll call it Sikapa credit card or Sikapa card, whatever. So if you see maybe one bank's card called Sikapa, just find out how Sikapa works. If Sikapa works, Sikapa card works 
like we are describing on that credit card, then it means it is a credit card. So you may have the, you may have various institutions or credit card issuers customizing their cards with a common name that the bank has determined. So just be interested in how the card works because that will tell you the type of card it falls under and even the card, the type of card it falls under, the type of that particular card it also falls under. This is very, very important. Okay, so we will begin with a type of cards. The first one is what we call standard credit card. Standard credit card, like I mentioned, you will not see any card with standard credit card written on it. We are looking at how the particular credit card works, the function. Uh, the, 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 um, yeah, the functions, etc., that determines the type of credit card it is. So with standard credit card, we are basically looking at the standard one, just like we have described today. The credit card that is issued to people who are about the age of 18 years, of course. When a, when a credit card issuer is giving you a credit card, you know it is a contract they are entering with you. It is a contract. And one of the elements of a contract is um, you have done contract law, right? So you know what I'm talking about. When we look at the elements, the capability or capacity, as we describe under contract law, capacity to contract, is very, very important. Even though under our contract law, the capacity to contract is at the age of, I think, 21 or so, 21. But, you know, generally, generally, when you are 18 years and above, because even if you look at the company's code, the new company's code, before anybody at all, you know, anybody at all can form a company in Ghana once you are the age of 18 years and above, you can form a company. So normally, when you are 18 years and above, we take you to be capable enough or you have the capacity to enter into contract. And when a credit card issuer is giving a customer a credit card, it is a contract they are entering into. And before the, the credit card issuer can enter into a contract with a customer, the customer has to be or must have in law what we call capacity. And one of the, uh, or the capacity comes with the age, the age. One of them is the age. The other is to be of sound mind, etc. Now you should obtain the legal age and the legal age in terms of credit card here is 18 years. So you should be 18 years and above then you can apply for a credit card. The credit card company will take you through all the processes we have described. If you fit, they will give you the card. Now, the standard credit card, as I keep on saying, the standard credit card, we are looking at how credit card works, as in the basic credit card, how it works. There is nothing like you having an account, a bank account before you can obtain a credit card. I made mention of this right from the beginning. You don't need a bank account before you can have a credit card. You can just walk to the particular credit card issuer, that is a particular financial institution, and if you meet their criteria, they will just open a revolving account for you. And the revolving account, I told you, is not an account the customer has access to. It is an account the company opens in the name of the customer where they will put the customer's credit line they have granted into for spending. So credit card in its basic form is known as a standard credit card. Credit card in its basic form is known as a standard credit card. 
Then we have another type of credit card called rewards cards, rewards cards. Now credit card becomes a reward card when the customer or the holder of the credit card has for some time been fulfilling all his credit card payments on time. And then the credit card issuer decides to reward him or her with some reward items. It can be anything. It can be a hotel stay. It can be car. It can be cash. It can be anything at all. You see, what some of these financial institutions do is that as the clients settle their credit cards bill on time, I told you that when they send you the bill, they'll give you grace period within which to make the payment. So as you pay within the grace period, you earn some points. Then when you get to a particular point, they can give you some reward items. Sometimes it is even discounts. They can give you some discounts on some products. For instance, if you are going to make purchases and then the product is they can say that, oh, for this month, because you have settled your credit card bill on time, or for three months now, because you've been settling your credit card bills on time, we are going to give you 10% discount on all your purchases you made during this month, which means every item you will buy, the cost, you will pay up to only 90%. The credit card issuer will pay the rest of the 10%. So the rewards may come in various forms, as I have described. So that is what makes a credit card a reward card. Mm -hmm. All right, we move on. That's, uh, this is what I mentioned before. Normally, for people who pay their balances of every month, those who are credit worthy, I mean, very, very credit worthy. Type of uh, credit card is what we call the secured credit card. This is a bit controversial because this type of credit card works sort of like a debit card. It works sort of like a debit card. Now, what happens with um, secured credit cards? You know, the name secured means some sort of security. Secured. It means this credit card goes with some sort of security. It means that the credit card issuer wants some sort of collateral or security before they go ahead with the issue of credit card, which is not the normal, how the normal credit card works. But then there can be, or this scenario can also okay. Another name for secured credit card is pay us you go pay as you go now what happens is that <clears throat> before you can get or when you are going for a credit card and then the credit card issuer tells you that okay we will give you the credit card all right but per our policy you need to open an account and the account you open, it is not for your credit card, but the account, you open an account with us as a form of security and then make some amount of deposits into the account. Now, when you have opened the account and you have made, place the amount of deposit we have, we require from you, then we'll go ahead and give you your credit card. The account you open, with the amount you have placed in the account will be the security to the credit card issuer should you fail to fulfill your credit card payment when your credit card bill is sent to you. So that account you open is an account you will not touch. It will be there because it is providing security to the credit card company. Okay. This a bit, that's why I started by saying that it's a bit controversial because normally credit card does not work like that. I mean, this one, when you have a card with an account attached to it, bank account attached to it, it becomes a debit card. 
But this time it is not a debit card, neither is it the normal or the standard credit card that we know of. But what happens is that the financial institution will require the one requesting for the credit card to open an account, place some sort of, for instance, if you if they determine that maybe pay your salary, your credit line, they can give you maybe up to 5,000 Ghana cities a month as your credit line. Then maybe they will tell you to open an account with them and place a deposit of maybe 2,500 or 2,000 into the account, which you will not touch. And that account will be a sort of security, to be a security to the credit card company. So that should you default settling your credit card debts, they will use that to defray part of the cost. That's a secured credit card. Uh huh. I thought I, I skipped one. Uh huh. Because I know they are supposed to be four. We had the fourth one and the last one, the, the fourth and the last type of credit card, the specialty credit cards. Specialty. Now, this one too. What happens is that let's say that a group of people, or whenever, whenever a group of people approach a credit card issuer that they need credit card for their members. For instance, if there's an association and then the association goes to a particular bank, let's say APSA, let's say we have a banking and finance association of UPSA level 300. Let's assume that you are workers, you are all earning salary, so you can afford credit cards. Then, you are going as a group. So your group leaders will have talks with, a, with APSA. For APSA to issue every group member a credit card, of course, depending on their credit line. Then the main reason why they are issuing or the group goes in for this particular deal is that at the end of the month, the dues that every member is supposed to pay will be deducted from their credit line. So if every member is supposed to pay 100 Ghana cities and, and all the members are having credit cards with APSA, every member has it, his or her own credit line because the credit line, they, they cannot be the same. It, it depends on how much every member earns. So depending on every member's credit line, then there will be an amount of dues that the association require, which they, they may have already spoken about it with APSA, and APSA has agreed that every month they should deduct, for instance, 100 Ghana cities from every member of the group's credit line. So every month, APSA will deduct from your credit line 100 Ghana cities to Banking and Finance Level 300 Association, and then charge it or bill it to the various uh, um, association members to pay when they are going to settle their credit card bills. That is a specialty card. This, this uh, type of credit card is open for purposes of maybe a particular association or a group of people, you know, uniting and being able to also get some sort of dues as a result of that. So. That is the specialty credit card. It is to support a social cause or professional organization or an alumni association. Madam. Yes. Madam, please, can you say mm -hmm. the Institute of Chartered Accountants? Logging. So, yeah, when, when you you become an accountant and then mm -hmm. start working. Okay. Yeah. Every month they deduct an amount of money from your pay. So is that a special from your, from, from your salary? Does it for you does, to remain for, for, for you to remain a member, you yeah, still have that, to pay some amount of your money. dues. Yes. That okay, one okay, is okay, not okay. no, sorry. The yes is not to your question. No. Okay. 
yeah, that one is not a specialty credit card because it is not on a card, right? If chartered accountant, yes. that is if ICA uh, enters into an agreement yes. with a particular bank in Ghana here to issue credit cards to all ICA accountants in Ghana. And then at the end of the month, they will deduct deals from their credit line. Then that will fall under specialty credit card. Do you get me? Oh, okay. But for yes, now, ma what is in existence is just the payment of your dues. That's your, uh, your subscription fees. That's that one okay. is, is a normal thing. It will be it will fall under this if there's a card involved. Oh, okay, okay. All I right. thought maybe there was a system, there was a system over there that works that way. Uh, oh, if I, I don't know much. I don't know much about that because I am not with ICA. But then you can find out if they have something like that. That is if they have an agreement with the bank and all members are having their cards and at the end of the month they deduct from their credit lines, then it will fall under this. But I doubt, I doubt that is the case. Okay, okay, madam. Madam, please, I have a question. Okay. Uh, madam, um, please, with a special card, um, mm -hmm. I realize that we're, talk we're talking about credit lines. And then, so I want to ask that, um, let's say Banking and Finance Association, mm -hmm. um, we have come to a fine consensus and then want to go to the bank for the special cards. Mm -hmm. Here lies the case, we are all workers. Mm -hmm. Are we going to make a special deposit based on our salaries? to enrich our credit lines or no. the bank is going to directly if it or the falls bank is going to directly work with how much you earn yes i mean yes. then it means that then it means that the bank is going to work with that uh, with uh, uh, our account our personal account or no what happens is that uh, you know for credit card you don't need an account except yes. for except for when it is the other way around when it is um, um the under card. the uh, how do you call it the secured the secured credit card that's the yes. only way they will secure with an account but ordinarily yes. if you look at the standard credit card it doesn't come or the, it's um open having a, an account account is not Right. Okay. So for okay. the for the specialty credit card, if the group yeah. is going in for a specialty credit card, the group will have agreements with a bank or a credit card issuer. Yes. Then the credit card issuer yeah. will assess the members of the group according to the. Okay. Kinds or the types of works they do to their salary exactly so they will look at each member's salary okay and that will determine each member's credit line but the important thing here is that okay or the main reason why banking and finance group is going in for this is to be able to get their deals on time you get it okay so, so that at the end of yes. every month the bank will deduct from every member's credit line the amount of deals that every member is supposed to pay and, and give it to the question, group's account. My, what I'm please, it's like, um, my question is not clear. You are not getting it, if I may put it that way. Okay. Let me get um, it then. Yes. You see, when when you were clarifying things now you said that mm -hmm. so that the deals will be directly mm -hmm. like we we'll take it directly from their credit line exactly so so my question is how then do they get that credit line are they They're, going to deduct it or mm -hmm. they are going to make deposit for that credit line the credit line is what the bank or the uh, whoever the Credit card issuer is has granted to every member of the group. You get it? When when yeah. the group 
went in for uh, went in for the discussion on the bank granting every member a credit card which is a special a specialty card the bank yes. assessed every member based on their salary yes the salary that they earn that is what the bank used to determine how much credit line every member should get so for okay. instance they saw that mr a earns thousand ghana cities yes so his credit line will be 400 okay. mr b earns 20,000 ghana cities his credit yes. line will be how much 800 ghana 8,000 ghana cities you get it okay so yes. every member in their credit line and like i said the credit line's determination depends on your ability to pay the credit line is how much the bank is going to grant to you to spend for them to pay so that at the end of the month they will give you the bill for you to pay late uh-huh you didn't start the class with us that's why you are calling madam, no madam i've gotten it i okay started because i was i was thinking about reimbursement that if you are saying credit line it is not for free so the definitely credit, they will pay back that is why i was yeah. asking and yeah you pay back you know what i'm saying is that yes, that is why i was yes you see the credit line is simply the the amount of money that the bank at, at at the beginning of every month how much they will put in your revolving account the revolving account is the account they have created for you for the credit card you are coming for, for you yes so at the yes. end of every yes. at the beginning of every month they will put an amount in that account because it is from that account that you'll be spending. When you are spending, it means that they are making the payment on your behalf. Yes. Uh -huh. So okay. that payment they are making on your behalf, and then they will bring you the bill at the end of the month for you to pay. Yes. Yes. Please, thank you. You are most welcome. Okay. So let's look at the but benefits. Please, I have a next question here. Hey, my dear. I need to finish. Oh. So most of you cannot stay online very long. So what you do, eh? Hold okay, on with the best finish. thing. Hold on, okay? Let me finish. Then I'll okay. give you time to ask. Okay, so that in case of light out, okay. we can at least finish before another the no. next lights out oh. comes. Okay. Okay, my dear. Thank you. All right. So, um, benefits of using credit card. For the benefits, we are going to look at the benefits of using credit card to the customer and to the merchants as well. Now, in terms of the customer, there are numerous benefits we can think of. Now, the first benefit that comes to mind is convenience. Convenience. You see? Let me mute all of you. I'm having some feedbacks. Convenience. Now, it is so convenient when you know that you can shop at any time, anywhere, and you don't need to worry about cash, physical cash. Because somebody is making the payment on your behalf. Even though you pay later, I mean, if you want to buy something now, urgently, and you don't have money to buy that thing, it is so frustrating. But here is the case with credit card. If you need something immediately, you can just take your credit card, go to the shop, choose your item, give your credit card to the attendant. He or she will swipe it. Your credit card is sure will make payment on your behalf immediately. You go with your item. I mean, people on you settle that the credit card is sure they are dead. It is a later thing. You see, so it is convenient. Now, when you compare credit cards and debit cards, which we are about doing, you see that credit card actually allows for small short-term loans. 
small short-term loans in the sense that if you need, I think that is what we call uh, small short-term loans. All right, okay, let's look at it generally. Generally. In the sense that if you need money to shop immediately, you can have access to your credit line, use it to shop, and then at the end of the month, you make payment for it. So it allows for small short-term payments, uh, loans, sorry. It also provides more fraud protection than debit cards. If you compare credit cards with debit card, credit cards comes with a lot of fraud protection. Because when, when you are using your credit card to shop, as soon as the credit card is slotted into the point of sale device or swipe, and unless, like I mentioned before, is sent to the credit card issuer to verify if you are the true holder. And the merchant may also go ahead and ask you some questions on the card that you need to be able to provide before the payment will go through. So it provides some sort of protection. Another form of protection, for instance, in the UK, if uh, the customer uses his or her credit card to make a purchase of products and the products are later found to be defective. The, the customer will not be the one who will bear the cost. The cost will be shared between the bank and the merchant of the item, of the defective product. They will settle their problem. You, the credit card holder, you will not pay anything because you were not the one to you know, uh, be blamed for purchasing defective product. It will be the cost of the bank and the merchants. Also, credit card offers rewards, of course. There are a lot of benefit packages and reward packages. This is what makes a credit card a reward card, as we've mentioned before. Rewards like the company giving you warranties, product warranties, they help a lot a lot because when you buy products and you have warranty on the product and the product gets spoiled within the warranty period, you can go in for an exchange or they will repay it for you free of charge. I mean, rewards also come with, um, in so many forms like money, et cetera, et cetera. There's also free loss coverage, free loss coverage on new uh, purchases of the customer. There's also, um, I mean, okay, okay. So these are some of the advantages that we can, you can get more when you go online and then you Google uh, on the advantages of credit card to the customer. But let's go into some disadvantages, the detriment. There are a lot of disadvantages as well to customers. Now, one thing, one, one first disadvantage is the fact that um, credit cards, when the customer is not able to pay within the stipulated time, the rate keeps on increasing. Like I said, the rate can even go as high as the rate, plus the penalty fee, whatever, can go as high as to a level where the customer will not be able to pay. The only option will be to file for bankruptcy, which will mean the customer's debt will be forgiven and the customer can no longer have access to um, credit schemes again. So it is, it is not that pleasant when the customer is not able to pay. And when you don't pay within the specified time to the interest rate is charged to its fullest. And that is what in most cases can lead you to the snowball effect I made mention of. You'll be drowned in, or you'll be drowned by unexpected high rates, interest rates, et cetera. Okay, now there's also another disadvantage in the in the in, in terms of um, the merchant inflating the prices of goods and services. You know, one thing that merchants do, or one thing that credit card issuers actually expect from merchants is what we call the discount fees or the interchange fees. Merchants pay 
some sort of fees. It is actually an agreement between the merchant and the credit card issuer. The credit card issuers are of the uh, reason that we are helping you merchants to get prompt payment for the goods and services you sell. Unlike before where you have to be chasing people for credit purchases, this time the people buy, we pay instantly for you. So what can you also do to appreciate what we are doing for you? Give us some small fees. And this is the fees we said is called the interchange and discount fees. So every item that the merchant sell, there's a percentage they normally pay to the credit card issuer. So depending on the particular customer, a uh, credit card issuer whose card was used for the purchase, the merchants will pay the percentage to the credit card issuer. Now, this percentage that merchants pay, ordinarily, they are not supposed to charge it to the ordinary customer or the consumer. That is, they are not supposed to inflate their prices such that the cost of the items will cater for how much they will pay to the credit card issuers. But in most cases, that is what they do. If the person knows that I will pay 10 students to this bank for items of 100 Ghana cities worth of goods bought from my shop, then why won't I let customers buy the items worth 100 Ghana cities for 120 Ghana cities? So then I'll be able to get how much I'm supposed to give them and then um, walk away with my 100 Ghana cities intact. That is what we are talking about. And when the inflated prices happen, it affects all customers users and non-users of credit cards, they all are affected. Because when you go to a shop, the prices, the price tags on the items are not for. We don't have credit card holders price tag and non-credit card holders price tag. One price tag for all customers. So that is also some of the disadvantages. Now, another disadvantage to the customer is Weaken, weakens the customer self-regulation. Now, one thing with uh, credit card usage is that when you use it and you are not careful, you will become addicted to shopping. If, I, if you watch the movie Confessions of the Shopaholic that I showed you at the beginning, you will see, that is if you watch the movie from beginning to the end, you'll see that Rebecca, because she had always dreamt of owning credit card right from her infancy. When she went to shop and she saw people paying with what she described as magic cards, right from that point, she needed one. And you remember what she said? She said that not only did she end up with one, but she ended up with 12. 12 different types of credit cards. I mean, 12 credit cards from different credit card issuers. And in the movie, she became so much addicted to shopping that she, whenever she steps out and she sees a store, you see how she describes how she sees a store? She says that, you know, when you see a man, that is very handsome and you feel like you are interested in the look in your eyes when you see that man. It's the same way I look when I see a store. You see? Whenever she sees a store, she sees a store as meeting up with a very handsome man. Because you see, she, she was so addicted to shopping. She fell in love with shops that she couldn't walk past the shop. Even when she tried to stop herself from shopping, when she enters a shop, she heard the mannequins speaking to her. You remember when she went in for the green scarf? The mannequin, she said she didn't need a green scarf because she had been given a huge credit card bill. But then the mannequin said that, oh my dear, but who said you don't need a green scarf? You need it. In fact, this green scarf is going to define who you are. You'll be known as the girl in the green scarf. You see, it, it got to a point that 
he became, I mean, she was a bit um, not behaving normal because the addiction was so intense that when you watch the full movie, you see that she even enrolled in a, a rehab. Rehab, you know, people who have some sort of addiction, they go for rehab. And Rebecca's case was serious. She went in for this rehab. And you know, normally what they do is that on their meetings, that's the rehab on their meetings, they normally let people share their experiences. So everybody would get up and say that, oh, I was addicted to shopping, but for the past three months, I have stayed off shopping. So I, I am doing my best to stop the addiction. Then they'll clap for you, you sit down. When it got to Rebecca's turn, the way Rebecca described shopping, in fact, the words, the kind of words she used and the look in her eyes, by the time she finished hers, all the people who were trying to solve their shopping addiction, plus even the leader, they all went to, uh, they all went, they saw themselves in, 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 in various malls shopping. Rebecca was able to lure them back into shopping with the kind of words she used to describe how shopping is. I mean, the addiction, when she shops, how it makes her feel. It was so serious. It took a lot before Rebecca was able to overcome the addiction. So, in, in fact, owning credit card can make you lose your self-regulation. You cannot control yourself when it comes to shopping. And research has even shown that when people are using credit card, they end up, you know, not feeling the pain of spending. You see, when you are buying something and you are not using money from your purse to pay for it immediately, you don't feel it that much. Unlike, for instance, you know you have only 100 Ghana cities in your purse and you have to buy an item worth 90 Ghana cities. You know the 90 Ghana cities is the only money you have. Will you remove it and buy the item of 90 Ghana cities and stuff? No. It will be very difficult for you to do. But when you are going to use credit card and you know you have a, a credit line of 100 Ghana cities and the item is 90, ah, you will buy it immediately without even thinking. So research has actually shown that the, the pain, people do not experience the pain of payments when they use credit cards. And even it has, research has also shown that people who own credit cards end up consuming unhealthy foods because they have credit card and they know they can eat at any restaurant of their choice. They will not sit up and cook, cook proper diet or proper food for themselves. Rather, they will all the time be hopping from one restaurant to the other. And that will mean consuming unhealthy food. Now, the benefit to the merchants too, we have a lot. Merchants now do not have to suffer from checks being bounced, from having to chase people around for their debts when they buy on credit. I mean, they now enjoy a whole lot of benefit because they get their money as soon as the items are purchased. The credit card issuers make the payments on their client's behalf. So they enjoy full payment of their items. And there's cost to merchants as well. The cost, one of them is the fees that I told you of, the discount and the transaction fees they pay, which is normally one to 3% of the value of each transaction that customers pay by their credit card. Credit card has security problems. Of course, when you use credit card and um, you are not careful, somebody can just have access to your credit card and use it against you. So when you own a credit card, you just have to be careful with your card. Anytime you lose your card, you have to inform your bank immediately so that they will you know, block the card and nobody can use it against you. Credit cards can be used in ATMs, of course. You remember last week I told you of fast loan, ATM enabling fast loan. 
You know, one thing is that, you know, the credit line that the credit card issuer grants to the credit card holder, it is normally not in physical cash. It's just a credit line that the credit card holder used to make payments and then at the end of the month, they charge it to the client. Now, let's say that you're a credit card holder and you need money immediately. You can actually speak to your credit card issuer to allow you benefits as in have physical cash, part of the money you have in your revolving account, your credit line, eh? you can have talks with your um, credit card issuer for them to allow you to withdraw part of it in physical cash form. So that if you have, for instance, 400 Ghana cities in your revolving account as your credit line, and then you speak to them that maybe you are in urgent need of money for serious for some settlement. And they, are, they can allow you to maybe withdraw like 200. This withdrawal, you can use your credit card to walk to any ATM to make the withdrawal. So when you go to the ATM, you slot in your credit card, you can make the withdrawal of, for instance, the 200 Ghana CDs. So when you make that withdrawal from your revolving account from your credit line, it is what we call the fast loan. When you use your credit card in ATM to withdraw part of your uh, credit line in your revolving accounts, we call it fast loan, fast loan. Now, electronic card numbering, electronic card numbering. If you look at your electronic card. Let me get mine. I, think I, I told you to bring yours. Oh, it's so amazing. You know what I've just done? I think I've left my purse in my car. And my car is parked in the compound, which is somehow far from the room I am. So. I'll just be going ahead with the, some of the things on the card. You can just be looking, if you have a card with you, you can look on it. Now, if you look at your credit card, you see some numbers, but not, not only your credit card, my, my people. All electronic cards, all electronic cards have these features we are talking about, all electronic cards. The only difference between, uh, the only way you can identify a debit card or a credit card from a debit card is that they have written on a debit card, they've written debits, debits on the card. And on credit card, they've written credits, credits on the card. So that's the, that's the only thing that are different. The rest of the things are the same. Everything, they are all plastic cards. That's why I told you that when it comes to the definition, they are all the same. They are all small plastic cards, which enable payments or which are used to facilitate payments, um, electronic payments. Now, the numbers that you, you see on your electronic cards, they have some sort of internal structure. It depends on the particular type of card you are using, but most of them share some common numbering scheme. Yeah, most of them, they share some common numbering scheme. For instance, if you are using Visa or MasterCard, if you are using Visa or MasterCard, normally the numbering that you see on the card, that's the card number. The first nine digits, the first nine digits are normally the individual, they are part of your account numbers. They are part of your account numbers. And then the final digit is what we call the validity check code. I think, oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't start, sorry. It is rather the first six digits. The first six digits are normally what they call the bank identification number, sorry. Sorry, the first six digits. You see every, I think the total number is 16 or so, if you have, if you have a MasterCard or Visa card with you, check. The numbering I think is 16. The first six digits, which are called the card prefix, 
number. They are normally the bank identification numbers. It helps you to know the particular bank card you are holding. The particular bank card you are holding. And the next nine digits, nine plus six will be 15. The next nine digits are normally the are normally part of the customer's account numbers that they use. So if it's a credit card, then it means part of your revolving account number. If it's a debit card, then part of your bank account number. So the next nine digits is normally except from your um, account number. Then the last and the final digit, making 16, is what they call the validity check code, the validity check code. So the numbering you see, they have their meanings and what they stand for. What, sorry, what they stand for. And that is what I've just told you. The first six is bank identification number. The next nine is the individual uh, cardholder's account number. That's part of the account number. And then the last digit is the validity check code. Of course, aside that, there are some security codes. There are some security codes. Um, you see expiry dates. You see the name of the card holder. You see the name of the bank or the issuer of the card. You see um, a whole lot of some other numbers on it. But there's one particular number or there, there, there are some particular numbers I want you to look at. If you are holding a card right now, especially if you are holding a debit card, Turn to the other side of the card. Look at the back of the card. The back, not the front. The front has the account number plus your name, etc. Turn the back of the card. Turn to the back of the card. And then normally you will see some three digits, some three digits numbers there. Who, who has a card and who has seen what I'm referring to? Who is with oh it? You have seen it? Yes, yes. Okay. The three numbers that you have seen, they are very, 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 very important. Very, very, very important. You know, for debit card, for debit card, one minute, eh? I have a call. Let me tell the person to call back. So the back of the card, the, the three digits you see, when you are shopping online, when you are shopping online, they will request for uh, this, oh, then it, I, it has just escaped me. There's, oh, they normally request for some code. I have forgotten, there's a particular name they use for it. When they make that request, especially if you are using a debit card to make payment online, it is not your PIN. It is not your PIN that you will put at, for that code that they will request to. It is those three digit numbers at the back of the card. Meaning that to someone steal your debit card right now, the person don't say that the person does not know my eight, my code, so the person, my pin number, so the person cannot use it to steal from ATM. Uh, no problem. Maybe it is the ATM that the person cannot use to steal from your account, but the person can use it to shop online with your card details. Because every information the person needs to do their shopping online, everything is on the card. The secret code to activate the purchase is what is at the back. So my people, when you lose your electronic card, that is why the banks keep on saying, as soon as you lose your card, inform them so that they will blot the card. If you lose your card and you don't inform them and a bad person gets his hands on the card, they, they can use, the, the person can use it against you. So be careful with your card. Okay, debit card, debit card. 
Now, debit card is the same plastic card, which is which enables payment, all right. But one thing or one difference between a debit card and a credit card is the fact that with a debit card, all right, yes, thank you very much. It is called the CVV or the CSC code. The CVV code, that's very good. Thank you very much, okay? This means that you've been shopping online a lot. I hope the shopping is genuine. That is just by the way. But Tetequé has just sent me the code I was looking for. The CSC code or the CVV code. When you are shopping online, this is a code they request. And those, the, the ticket numbers I just spoke to you about, that is what you put there when they request. So be careful with your debit cards, especially. So debit cards, what difference between, or what differentiates a debit card from a credit card is the fact that with a debit card, before you can own a debit card, you need to have a bank account. When you open a bank account, you can request the bank to give you a debit card or some banks automatically, as soon as you open a bank account, they give you a debit card. Nowadays, a lot of banks have been advertising that you don't need to open a bank account. They can give you a debit account, a debit card um, immediately. You don't even fidelity. They've been uh, advertising that you don't need to come physically. They will even deliver it to you and all that. That's a strategy. If you request for the debit card, then it means you have approved for them to open a bank account for you. They will open the bank account for you, provide you with a debit card. When, because with a debit card, the reason why you need a bank account is debit card is only used on an existing bank account. Your ATM card is an example of a debit card. You can only use your ATM card if you have a bank account with money in it. Unlike credit card, when you, you use the card and, I mean, you shop, someone pays the money on your behalf. With debit card, it is how much you have that will determine how much you can spend. When you are shopping with your debit card, you are shopping directly from your bank account. So how much you have in your bank account is how much you can spend. Unlike, debit, unlike credit card that someone will make payment on your behalf and later bring you the bill, Debit card, you need money on your account before you can shop with it. You see the difference? So that is the main difference between debit card and the credit card. You need a bank account before you can have a debit card. And with debit card, you need to all the time spend from your accounts. If you don't have money on your account, uh, sorry, in your account, then it means you cannot use your debit card. Period. Period. You can't use your debit card. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Now, because of competition, a lot of things are happening. Some banks allow customers to have overdraft. So you may not have money in your account immediately, but then if you are part or if you qualify for overdraft, then you can use your debit card even when you don't have money in your account immediately because the bank will grant you an overdraft for you to use to make the payment involved. We have types of debit cards. And in most cases too, like, I'm, like I said for credit cards, some banks customize their cards, whether debit or credit, they may customize it. And the name they will give to the card, like I said before again, Look at how the card works. That will determine whether it is debit or credit. Look at whether the card is open on an account. And most of all, look at whether there is debit or credit written on the account. That will determine the type of card you are dealing with. In Ghana, for instance, we have a lot of customized cards by the various banks. So. The, the various customer guys can be debits or credit. But in terms of debit cards, just like we saw for credit cards, debit cards has three main types. Debit cards has three main types. What we call the online debit cards, the offline debit cards, and the electronic test system. 
or the value cards, the value card. Please hold on with your question, okay? I want to finish, then I will take questions. Or the value card. Now, this one too, this one too, I always stress on this point. You will not see a card written online. You will not see a card written offline. I mean, you will not see a debit card written online. You will not see a debit card written offline, or you will not see a debit card written electronic pass. But it depends on how the card works to determine whether it is an online card, it is an offline card, or it is an electronic pass. This is the understanding I want you to get right from the beginning of the times. Okay. So let's move on with online debit card. When we say that a card is an online debit card, then it means that as soon as the customer uses the card, as soon as the customer uses the debit card, there is an immediate reflection of the amount spent on the customer's account. There is an immediate reflection of the amount spent on the customer's account. What I mean is, for instance, if you go to Westos Mall and you walk to maybe, um, 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 Ed Guess is no longer there, let's say you go to game, game, right? Go to game shop and you purchase an item and then you give them your debit card. The card you are using becomes an online card if as soon as games, a uh, shop attendance swipes and then deducts how much the item is worth, you see, uh, you receive an alert with an immediate reflection of the amount deducted from your account, then it means that you are using an online debit card system. Online simply means uh, spend as a reflection. Spend now, there's immediate reflection of the deduction on your account. Simple. You see, when you are using ATM debit cards, sometimes they may be secured with you entering your PIN number. Especially if they slot your card into the point of sale device, they may require you to put your PIN or key in your PIN before the card will be able, they will be able to have access to your account and then make the deduction. So sometimes to the online debit card comes with verification, some sort of verification. Then we have the offline. We have the offline. The time, oh my people, the time. Let me just run through it. We are almost done. The, the time. So the offline, what happens is that with the offline, when the customer uses the card, there, there isn't an immediate reflection of the amount spent on the customer's account. It takes like up to two working days before the customer will see a reflection on his or her account. So if you, if you use your debit card and the deduction is not made immediately from your account, then it means that the card becomes offline. It may take up to two working days before the deduction will reflect on the customer's account. Then the electronic pay system. With the electronic pay system, it, they are also referred to as value cards. For these cards, you will have to load money onto the card before you can use them. You don't need a bank account to own an electronic card system. You, it's example of this in Ghana is the EaseWish card, EaseWish card, whereby you need to load money onto the card and then you can use it to shop. So with electronic pass, you don't need a bank account. You have the card. <laughs> You, are give, you load money onto the card and then you can use, go ahead and shop the card. There are a lot of advantages of using debit cards. One of them is the fact that if you are not a credit worthy customer who can obtain a credit card, you can have access to a debit card at any time when you open a bank account. So it allows people who are not credit worthy but then wants to own a card to open account and have debit cards. 
Also, I mean, um, it helps with the avoidance of writing checks, of course. When you have your credit card, you, sorry, your debit card, you don't have to write checks, it will go through the clearing system. I mean, you can use your card to make payments. There are so many advantages, my people, you can read on later. There are also disadvantages. And one of the key disadvantages we can think of is the fact that when they may, uh, I mean, usage of debit cards comes with extra cost, as in extra fees. When you use cards, you are, you, you are charged card maintenance fees. As when you happen to redraw, use the card on an overdraft balance to you pay overdrafts interest, of course, as well as other charges that the bank may, um, you know, charge. So these are some of the, uh, these are the various types of debits and credit card. Now there are new developments in electronic card. We have new biometric credit card technology, which are being rolled up by, especially uh, uh, this um, um, Monica Eaton, whatever the name you can you can mention. I don't want to commit myself. So um, there are lots of new biometric technologies which are being rolled out with fingerprints, et cetera, by the various card, debit cards and credit card companies like the uh, Visa, et cetera. Now, some cards are actually using fingerprints, et cetera, to activate. Some are even electronic. Some cards are even electronically made such that you can erase your, your card numbers by locking the card Etc. cetera, there, there are a whole lot of development in the electronic car system. In Ghana, we have EaseWish. We know EaseWish is one brand which was supposed or which was introduced to help with our payment system, just that people did not accept it with the intentions that was used to introduce the card. People thought that it was going to cripple them they were not going to be able to have access to their funds as and when they needed. And I blame it on the education too. The education too was not so much done. At the point, government was just even force it on public sector workers that they said that if you don't own an Israelish card, you will not receive your salary. And it didn't work out because uh, um, union groups, uh, you know, demonstrated against that and it didn't work out. So. His wish is one, one example of an electronic test type of debit card that we have in Ghana. And it is amazing because it is the only card that actually provides bank with a common platform. I mean, you, you can actually have access to your to money at any time by walking into any bank at all in Ghana. Any bank at all. So I think we'll not be able to watch the videos. I have some of them on the LMS. You can watch them when you go online. I will end here because we've spent much time already. Let me take one or two questions from you. And then we will call it a day. Any question, my dear people? Well, I have a question. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Madam, please. Um, you see, there are some credit cards where um, there is no as to how much you can withdraw There's in no... a specified period. So I, I wanted to know. No, I didn't. I didn't get the beginning of your With question well. I said, um, I noticed that there are some credit cards where you, ha you don't have a limit to how much you can withdraw within the specified period of time. So I wanted to know- um, Is it debit, what cards, the... debit cards or credit cards? I'm not very sure. Yeah, because for, oh, for yeah. credit card, for credit card, you, it, you spend from your uh, line of credits, right? So let's rule that out. I'm sure your question is on debit card. 
debit card, you withdraw from your account or you use the card on your account. Is that what you are referring to? So what is the reason? Yes. I wanted to know the reason why they do not have limits. Uh, the reason is, you know, before, if you look at the traditional characteristics of a savings account, for instance, if your card was given to you, if a bank opened a savings account for you and they gave you a, a, a debit card, before you could, they had a, a limited number of withdrawals in the olden days. But today, those are not working because uh, those are still not in existence because there's huge competition in the system. Every bank is trying to overtake the other. So what can you as a bank do to have an edge over your colleague bank? One of the means is to allow for uh, any number of withdrawals that banks want. So, so now in terms of you owning a debit card, there's no limits on your withdrawals. You can withdraw as many times as you want. So it's basically due to competition and other technological changes, like advancement, et cetera. Are you okay? Uh, I saw some talking about it. Um, I don't call it the black card or something like that. I can't hear you, oh my dear. I said, I think, um, I saw it in the movies. I think uh -huh. they call it the black card. The what? A black card. Black card? Yeah. Uh huh. What does it do? Um, with it, you can withdraw any amount that you want. But I don't know whether it's a debit card or a credit card. You can use it to withdraw from your account. Then it is a debit card. You see, I when I was talking about debit cards and even credit cards, I made mention of the fact that some of the cards have been customized. The various institutions or banks or whoever is issuing they, they, they customize their cards with specific, uh, with specific names. That's why I told you that look at how it works to be able to know where to place it. So if this black card allows people to withdraw any amounts from their account, then it is a debit card. You get me? Then the type of debit card so you need to know whether when they make a withdrawal, there's an immediate reflection on the account or it takes two to three days for the reflection of how much is withdrawn to be on the account, then that will mean it is either offline or online. I saw, um, I saw a hand up. Okay. Please uh, Madam, please. Mm -hmm. please. The question is, mm, mm -hmm. there are several MasterCards, okay? There are mm -hmm. several MasterCards. Uh -huh. So with GCB, they said they have MasterCard, Gold, MasterCard, Diamond, and Platinum. And mm -hmm. then I don't, uh -huh. so I just want to know, like, mm -hmm. what are some of the purposes of maybe things that the Gold can do, the Diamond, and then the Platinum? Um, what, what, uh, the, the thing is, uh, all these are part of the customization that they do. At the end of the day, it is a MasterCard, right? But then the bank okay. will sit back and then try to, you know, group its custom customers according to maybe their income level, right? So for instance, okay. those who earn maybe above maybe a particular amount of salary, let's say those who earn maybe 10,000 Ghana cities, this is just an example I'm giving. Those who earn okay. about 10,000 Ghana cities may be placed under platinum. You get it? Or yeah, they may be placed under gold, etc. So it depends on, normally they do some of these customization depending on the uh, amount of income that their customers earn so that they'll be able okay. to differentiate and know uh, how much or the type of people they are dealing with. Oh, okay, 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 madam. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. Any other question? Okay. I guess your silence means consent. All right. Please, I have a, I have a question here. Hey, my dear. 
Right. Okay, go ahead. I'll take yours, the last one. All right, go ahead. Uh, Madam, I didn't get some of the explanations very well. Um, the ex example are like the secured credit cards. I mm -hmm. was I was still going through them even after the class, but I wasn't still getting it. My, my dear, that let me let me shorten also, let me yes, shorten madam. your question for you, okay? By this evening, I'll put this video on YouTube. Okay. So go to YouTube. Okay. Now we have exhausted our time. You know, I've taken even more than your time. So go to YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe to my channel, Deborah Eddy Chumwa. Search for me, subscribe to my channel. You'll be able to have all videos I'll post online. Then get, download the video and replay it. Okay? Play it as okay. many times as you want. You'll get the understanding. Okay? Okay, thank, thank you. I'll put a link to on the LMS. I'll put a YouTube okay. link there. So you can just click on it and then have access to the video. Any other question? So there, there's a group uh, assignment here. Uh-huh. Uh, what about? The group assignment. Yes. So this is what I'm going to tell you this. Um, you, you won't do it next week. I'll call your captain. I'll have you in groups and eh? I'll give you some term papers. So as part of the questions, this is what you will do. This is part of the assignment you do for this semester. So when the groups are formed, then you have your questions plus this one. So Frank, remind me, okay? Remind me that by next week, when we meet in class, yes, we'll have the groups formed and then they can have the assignment to plus this very one. This um, uh, banks. Yes, madam. Yes, the presence. Yes, madam. Yeah. So you remind me, we'll do that during the course of the week. So my people, this is where we'll bring today's lecture to an end. I wish you all the best. Next week, God willing, we'll meet face to face. 11, 15 to, is it one fifteen or so? We'll meet, we'll meet as one group, okay? So all of you should- It's one fifteen. Aha, uh -huh. 11, 15 to one fifteen. we'll meet. Yes, madam. Me, please, come on. 11, 15 to one fifteen. period. No more. Um, okay. I wish you all the best. Enjoy the day, the rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.